Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game Kickstarter review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a one to four player game that takes about 45 minutes to play, maybe about an hour, and it's for ages about 12 and up. It is called Furtherance. Furtherance is the fast-paced kingdom and army building strategy game. It's basically tableau management and tactics. It's by uh, Brent Keith, and the art is by Michael Longston and Elizabeth Gass. And in the game Furtherance, you're basically going to be getting a tableau of workers, as well as uh, resources to al allocate to buy certain things like items and upgrades, better uh, upgraded workers and buildings. The workers you're going to be using on your turn to perform actions, and those actions are going to allow you to either gather more items and buildings and whatnot, as well as units to move onto the board. You're going to be manipulating those units to fight other players' castles, as well as units, and trying to gather victory points. On the board, if you can get to six victory points first, you're going to be the winner, and if you can hit four victory points, you're going to get an extra worker, which is very useful because it gives you an extra action, just like you would see in a uh, worker placement style game more actions is always better all while at the same time building these buildings that can give you granted stronger powers uh, provided you're able to utilize them because you have to actually spend workers all throughout your turn to reduce the time it takes to make those buildings accessible to you anyway that is the basic idea of the game hit six victory points no matter how you want to do it whether it be fighting or building you get there first and you're going to win the game furtherance let's go down and take a look at the game and everything included so here we have the game Furtherance and everything included. Of course, obviously the rule book as well as the box to the game. And then here are all the things. Let's go over them. The first thing is buildings. There's buildings you can acquire throughout the game. These things are mainly going to be utilized as uh, things that will help you throughout the game or things that you can use in your specific area on the board. You've got item cards that you can buy that are going to give you things like health potions and other like different interesting aspects of uh, weapons and whatnot. Upgrades, these are going to be upgraded workers uh, that you're going to be able to use after you've upgraded your workers. They will be able to uh, turn into these guys that do different things that help throughout the game. They're going to get units that you're going to place on the board. These are the primary things that go on the board, and they're going to move around tactically to kill your opponents. They have their life, they have their attack, and they have their cost, as well as their name and sometimes an ability as well. And then over here is going to be your character, which is going to give you a special ability at the top. And at the bottom, it's going to tell you all of the actions you can take on your turn, depending on how many workers you have. Uh, the leaders are are purple. On the board here is obviously it plays from one to four players, although from what I saw, uh, it's only two to four, uh, so I'm imagining there's probably going to be a single player variant which comes out in the Kickstarter, so I can't talk about that too much. Uh, but everybody starts with uh, 10 HP and you got zero victory points. If you get to six, you win. If you get to four, you're going to receive a worker as you can see. And uh, you're going to have your own little areas here. Your castles are what you're going to be trying to defend while trying to do buildings. You're trying to get to the six victory points in any way possible. Sometimes you're going to be able to use units and on the units it'll tell you if it gives you victory points. There's one that's like this flag bearer here. It says you get one victory point for every person on the field and this area here is the field. Uh, and then you're going to have, of course, the buildings that can give you victory points as well. Like this one here, uh, two victory points if you build this for 13. It's going to have six health and it's going to go into your castle area that can be attacked. And then this is going to take five turns to build or a five workers depend five worker actions depending on how many workers you have at the given point in the game uh and of course that's going to be how you win that's the most important way is getting those victory points and making sure players aren't destroying them because they can be destroyed as well uh you're going to be getting gold these you got small gold tokens you got larger gold tokens one and five you've got your damage tokens you put on your units you've got bonus health tokens which you can get depending on the leader you have other bonus tokens that are used especially these ones here which are from the items bonus victory points as well as these tiny tokens that you put on the buildings which indicate whether they're built or not uh, when you build buildings sometimes they do different things depending on the workers and depending on the uh, leaders that you have but overall that's what you're gonna get in the game furtherance all right let's come up and I'll explain the game very quickly and we'll go down and I'll show you a couple turns how you play it so very quickly now all you're gonna be basically doing is getting one or two workers depending on if you're playing the advanced or the beginner game then you're also gonna get four gold and you're going to get your area of the board which is gonna be based on where you're set up it's gonna get 10 health and you get zero victory points to start on your turn you're gonna tap a worker or multiple Multiple workers if you have them and do an action workers will tell you what kind of actions they have on them let me go ahead and find uh, one of the action cards on your leaderboard you can mine for gold you can market for buying up to two items you can build to start a building you can develop to remove an hourglass token on one of your buildings you can recruit to buy a unit put it on the space in your castle there's three spaces there and you can research which is drawing three cards from a deck putting one in your research area face down one on top of the deck one on the bottom of the deck uh, using these workers basically to turn them side oh I dropped one turn them sideways is then going to give you that ability uh, another thing you can do is upgrade workers you can turn this worker to the side add a secondary uh, upgraded worker 
And then as you continue to do this, you're going to be removing time counters off of those main advanced workers, and then you'll get to use the advanced worker when all the time counters are gone, removing this worker. Uh, when you place units on the board, you can move them on the next turn, unless you're a specific class, but in general, it's going to be the next turn you can move to, and then you can attack twice. When you attack, it functions similarly to Magic the Gathering. Your attack goes to their defense, and their attack goes to your defense. The uh, only difference is the damage stays on the characters, and when they are removed of all health, they are removed from the game. You continue to play that way. If you hit your opponent's castles, you're going to destroy them. Destroying them grants you victory points. It also removes your opponents from the game. And when you get to six victory points from either the winning via units or winning via the um, uh, the buildings, you're going to just simply win the game. Pretty simple. All right, so let's go out and I'll just show you the game and uh, how it works, and then we'll come up and talk about it and what my review is. So I went ahead and set the game up furtherance for two players, one on one side, one on the other. This player will be here. This player will be over here. These sides of the board will be ignored. Victory points and health, health and victory points for each side, for each character. I went ahead and set up all the items, buildings, and upgrades. There's three that are going to be dropped down from the decks here, and then the units will be the same. You're going to have workers available over here that you can gain from victory points and by defeating other th certain things. And then, of course, leaders. You pick your leader by simply drawing three or X plus number of players. Uh, the person who's going last is going to choose one, and then it's going to go like that in, in a circle, then back in the circle for playing. So we'll just say that this player picked last, so he's going to go first. This player is uh, Gaudia the Greedy, which starts with 12 gold as opposed to four. And this player here can buy one item without using an action. So that's pretty good every turn, but he only gets four gold to start. That's the general amount of gold you start the game with. So, well, this player is going to go ahead and start, and they can choose to use their worker to perform any of the actions, whether it's A, they're going to be able to com uh, collect four gold, uh, which would be like that. The other option being you can go ahead and go to the market and uh, buy two items. These are the uh, items down here. They have things like potions, which will give yourself uh, heals, offhand knife, which is actually a special uh, item that you can add to your unit that lets you attack one more time, and an hourglass. You can buy this, and then uh, whenever you want, you can sacrifice this to take an extra turn. Um, that is another action you can go ahead and take. There's the building, which you turn that over. You spend the gold for the buildings. These are all the gold costs. It shows you right there. It tells you the health of the building and how long it takes you to make it. So in this case, if she's over here, this building will go over here. You're also going to put an hourglass token, depending on the number right here. And then when you remove all of them is when you're going to be able to uh, enact the building. It'll be basically built, and you'll be able to utilize whatever it says on the card. This one specifically lets you remove one damage counter from a unit that is in your castle area. Pretty cool, right? Uh, developing. You can remove an hourglass token, like I said before. So after for the last turn, you built this for four. On your next turn, you'd be able to remove this one off, and then you'd have your medical center built and ready in your tableau to be utilized for the rest of the game, or until it is destroyed. Another thing you can do is recruit. Recruiting is pretty simple as well. There are three units that you can go ahead and choose from. Whenever you buy anything, by the way, things start flipping over. Uh, but if you wanted to buy something like that, maybe for five, you could then take this unit and put it on your side of the board, uh, anywhere in the, in the bottom three areas, and then they have specifically their health, their damage, the cost, and then what they do. This one lets you uh, attack two spaces away, which is basically if they're here, they can go one, two, or one, two, any two spaces that they can walk to. One attack per turn, and no counterattacks. So you can't counter somebody regardless of where they're attacking you from. In general, when you're attacking with somebody, uh, you get to go ahead and do a damage and damage. But in this case, she's basically an archer, so she can do kind of some cool stuff like that. So that is recruiting. Another option is to research, which is drawing three cards from the um, any of these decks here. You're going to look at the top three. You're going to be able to choose one to put into your research area, which is going to be face down. You can put one on the top of that deck and then one on the bottom of the deck, depending on how you want to do it, to make sure players don't get good cards and you get to keep the best one. Pretty useful option, uh, but probably not the best use of your single worker action at the beginning of the game. Uh, and then the final thing you can do is upgrade. You can tap this, you can pay five gold if you wanted to, and uh, you can select, you, you're going to get an option for, where are they? Upgraded workers here. These guys here. You put an X2 on the side, you add the time counters to it, which is going to say, I believe there's three time counters. And whenever you tap this for uh, developing, you can remove the time counters until eventually they're all removed. This worker is going to disappear appear, and you're going to get the new worker's ability, which says when using this to buy an item card, you only need to pay half the, the cost. So that's kind of cool when you upgrade your workers. Um, and that is basically all the actions you can take. When building units, they have summoning sickness, so when you put them there on the first turn, they can't do anything until their next turn. But in the next turn, they can move up to two spaces, and they can attack twice. 
in this case, if you're looking at this archer, and he has, there's a unit here, you've built it, and now it's your next turn. You can simply move this guy up one space, and then two spaces away, it can attack, and it would do one damage to his three health, putting a damage on this unit here. And thusly, uh, putting it down to two. And if it ever goes to zero, it's going to uh, perish, right? Uh, the, the other last thing that's kind of interesting to note is these are your uh, castle areas and your health. Whenever a unit hits it, it's going to take one damage, and it'll also do one damage to that unit. And if you ever hit down to zero, you're going to perish. Uh, another thing is, too, you're going to have the ability to protect yourself with other buildings, or maybe buildings are going to be utilized to, uh, uh, to be attacked as opposed to your castle. And they have health themselves. When your stuff dies, like your units and your buildings, you can actually research them for a cost in gold. I think it's two gold, and you can put them down into your research area so that you can play them again, and you won't have to worry about them going and being discarded forever. Get everybody's HP down to zero to win the game or simply get to six victory points and you'll win as well and when you hit four you actually get an additional worker which is going to give you an additional action on your turn and that's the basic idea of the game furtherance so let's come up and explain what i think about the game and then whether or not you should pick it up yourself so just before we jump into the review of the game one caveat the workers actually don't come out in threes it starts like this whenever you research a new worker you draw two you pick one and that's how it kind of works same basic principle, but you don't get to go ahead and pick them from the top. You actually just get to choose them. Uh, so other than that, though, I pretty much think I got everything. Uh, rules and all that might change as the Kickstarter goes on. I don't know how the solo variant works. So what do I think about the game further? And so first of all, the artwork's not for me. That's the first thing I would say. I do, however, like the board's artwork. I like that old school feel. It's cool. It's not necessarily that I don't like the artwork. I just think that the mix of the two is kind of kind of weird. I would have preferred it all to be one type. So you have uh, workers here that are kind of more like cartoony style. And then you've got the old like a Nintendo 8-bit kind of style going on, on the board. So I'd like it to be kind of all cohesive, uh, as it were. Uh, another thing I'd say about the game is there's a beginner mode and then there's the advanced mode. The advanced mode is you start with one worker and the beginner mode is you start with two workers and you can only choose a certain, uh, certain leaders. I don't know how it would function with uh, the advanced mode just including an extra worker, but I think that the game uh, is much better when you have two workers to start because the game speeds along a little bit more. On your turn, when you tap a worker to re to, uh, to basically develop, where you're going to remove one of those ca time counters, the beginning of the game from a building, it's sluggish. And the reason why is because if, it's, if you buy something that has three time counters, you're basically spending four turns just to research that building, giving other players the ability to pick up uh, units and move them across the board and hit your castle and or your keep and units become very powerful in that scenario when you add an extra worker you then have the option to buy a building and then maybe you want to get gold or maybe you want to do a time counter from a building that you've already bought and then you can go ahead and buy a unit as well it just gives you that more flux, flux fluctuating ability and uh, receiving a worker on that fourth one definitely helps definitely increases the flow of speed uh, it could result in a snowballing effect if you're doing very very well but I think in a large Larger player game that's not well I know in a larger player game that's not going to be the case uh, but nevertheless two workers is definitely for me something I would choose to play with uh, because I just feel like you start losing turns with just one at the beginning of the game a lot of the uh, leaders are really cool and they all have their own unique play style when you pick a leader it's definitely going to change the way you want to play the game whether it be uh, the the fierce guy that allows you to move and attack units at the very beginning when you place them or whether it be like Dedrick the discerning he lets you buy the top card of any deck for four which means it's kind of like a gambling mode and you're going to be more likely to build uh, then you have the builder who's even more likely to build because uh, whenever you build or complete a building you get three gold which is pretty cool as well and there's a whole bunch of them that all do different things and change the style of play two players is not so bad when you're playing with two workers i would not suggest playing two players with one worker and i think with four players you can get away with either or but i still like the fast speed the fast nature of the game when you increase the worker count i'm not sure how that would affect all the leaders because i didn't play test it enough to be able to give you that information uh what i really enjoy about the game is it has two aspects to it you're building your buildings uh on one side and then you're attacking and you're utilizing units on the other sometimes your units are going to have stuff like excalibur that are going to give you victory points or other units that don't do much and need to be defended because they hold a victory point on them which is kind of cool as well but you're trying to move your units into the field maybe with a flag bearer to give you victory points and there's a lot of different ways you can go ahead and discern that and in a multiplayer game killing players is a way to gain points and all that as well so that's obviously very useful and you want to go ahead and do that if you possibly
possibly can. Uh, but of course, it's going to dissuade players to be less aggressive and more tactical in that kind of a nature. Because if you're going ahead and fighting one player and using all your forces, then the other two players can come out and start messing with you as well. So it becomes more of a balancing game. We're in a two player game. It's definitely a lot more aggressive. And when you're playing with two workers, it feels like that. Overall, it's a fun little game. I enjoy it. I feel like the mechanics work pretty well. Uh, there's a couple little things that like little things about the cards and whatnot that just need to be reworked as far as wording goes. But overall, I had a good time. Uh, main point of contest is just the one worker. I do not like the fact that I feel like I'm losing a turn. And when you add that extra worker, it makes you feel a whole lot better. And uh, my cameraman would probably go ahead and say that the playing as the units are probably stronger than going for the buildings just because of the fact at the beginning of the game if you only have one worker that's uh, the worker the, the units when you place them down they can start just moving in uh, but that would be up for you to decide otherwise though for you uh, it's going to be one of those things where if you enjoy a game that has two types of mechanics it's like tableau management buildings as well as the uh, tactics nature as well of the game playing put together if you like that feel of the game if you like that way the style of artwork is looking and uh, if you don't mind playing a more tactically strategic style game. This is probably going to be one that you probably should check out look on, up on Kickstarter. For me, it's right down the middle. Just a little couple quirks and whatnot, but overall I had a good time playing the game. Definitely go ahead and check it out for you if it's something you'd be interested down below in the in, on, on our description where it's in Kickstarter. Alright guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.